Why did God create viruses? Well, this question is part of a larger question that philosophers call the problem of natural evil. And it goes something like this. If God is all-powerful, God is all-knowing, God is all-good, then we would expect the world that we live in to be a world where there is no pain and suffering, where there is no disease and death. Yet, we live in a world where there is pain and suffering and disease and death, and therefore skeptics argue that God simply cannot exist because a world like the one we live in is incompatible with a God who's all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-good. Why would God create viruses if these are infectious agents that cause death and disease? Well, one way to respond to this very real challenge is to argue that maybe there are good reasons why God would create viruses. And this is where science can help us out. The first thing to point out is that there are countless number of viruses that exist in the world. In fact, uh, we've only really scratched the surface when it comes to identifying the different types of viruses that do exist. But of those viruses that we know, a very small percentage actually are pathogens that infect plants and animals, and even a smaller number are pathogens that infect human beings. In other words, most of the viruses that we interact with in our world are those that cannot do us any kind of harm. They, are, uh, they have no impact on our health as human beings. Now, of the viruses that do exist, uh, many of them actually play a critical role in promoting ecosystem health and biodiversity. For example, there's a large number of viruses that are called bacteriophages. These are viruses that infect bacteria. And when they do, they burst the bacterial cells apart and the bacteria release their contents into the environment. This is really very important because this allows for efficient and effective cycling of nutrients through ecosystems. If it wasn't for the activity of bacteriophages, the nutrients in bacteria would be permanently sequestered within their interior, meaning that it's unlikely that we would have the biodiversity on the earth that we see today. In fact, it's quite possible that most of life on earth would essentially be bacterial cells. Now, of those viruses that are actually pathogens that infect plants and animals, this, this, these pathogens are critical for ecosystem stability. Because if it wasn't for the activity of these pathogens, plant and, and animal species would, would have runaway growth, overwhelming ecosystems. And so in order to maintain balance in ecosystems, the plant numbers and the animal numbers have to be controlled. And one way to do this is through the activity of pathogens like viruses. So in other words, there are very good reasons why God would create a world with viruses in it. They serve a critical role in promoting biodiversity and in promoting ecosystem stability. But what about those pathogens, those viruses that infect human beings? Did God create viruses that would be pathogens for humans? Well, it's possible from a creation model perspective to imagine a world where God created human beings without any kind of pathogens that would infect humans, including viruses. And that it's only later on that these pathogens, including viruses, are introduced to the human population through a mechanism known as host hopping or zoonotic transfer. In fact, scientists, at least some scientists, think this is the mechanism by which the SARS-2 coronavirus entered into the human population, causing the COVID-19 pandemic. And it turns out that host hopping or zoonotic transfer actually takes place when we as humans confine animals in very high numbers to very small spaces. And when we do that, the likelihood of a virus hopping from an animal host to a human host is quite high. So in other words, it wasn't God who created human pathogens, but human pathogens actually resulted from our folly and lack of wisdom as we interacted uh, with the animal realm. So in other words, uh, the existence of viruses in the world is fully compatible with a God who's all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-good.